Some decisions in life come easier than others. If a wheel set gives you more speed, better crosswind protection, that's pretty much a no-brainer, right? And it happens to be cheaper? Sign me up. This is your surely diabetic cycling coming at you once again. This is a channel sponsored by and brought to you by none other than my own damn wallet. If that's your sort of thing where a regular normal guy gives you his trials and tribulations and opinions and thoughts, please hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification, make sure you hit the like button on this thing and absolutely leave me any comments or questions down below. Coincidentally, I have an episode on my channel where I actually put the Zip 303S wheel set against Hunt 4454 wheel set, which I will link right here. While both wheel sets are fantastic wheel sets, uh, when I talk about the 303S, I do mention that I had some issues with a couple of things, and so let me clear that up before I go any further. Okay, so in that episode, I talk about how I keep losing air from my 303S, and at the time shot with uh, Schwalbe Pro 1 tubeless, and I had wondered at the time whether, hey, am I losing air because of the new design of the rims where you know there were hookless and all that. So lo and behold, it actually wasn't the reason why I kept losing air. It actually came down to the tire choice itself. So I kept losing air and at the time I was uh, experimenting with uh, different tires, uh, all 28 mil variant because all my wheel sets were uh, moved to support 28 mil. So I tried different tires and I also tried with other pairs. I think I've tried like eight different Schwalbe Pro ones, all brand new by the way. So every time I had the Schwalbe Pro 128 on, losing air every single time. Whereas if I go with the Prellis and other tires, the air did not leak. So whether the rims were hookless or not was not the issue. So I wanna clear that up first. And then most importantly, number two, the second point um, at the time I was also complaining was, hey, the front wheel, the, the front end is pretty um, chatty, uh, as in 
the wheel, the front wheel, I felt at the time that uh, the crosswind protection was horrible. And fast forward to today, that's the reason why I've decided to strip the Zip 303S from my Pinarello Prince and go with another different wheel set. And the decision did not come uh, lightly, however, it was a pretty definitive decision that I made after I actually went down um, off my bike when I was high up on the mountain on a very windy day and crosswind blew, front wheel gave, and I was on the ground in a matter of a second. All right, so before I go any further, so, so far I talked about my issues with the Zip 303S, but not everything's bad. This is a fantastic wheel set. Um, when you take away the whole crosswind protection side of things, the wheels roll fast, wheels roll easy, wheels roll smooth. I really have zero issue with the wheels. Uh, minus the whole crosswind protection. So I still would recommend, especially if you ride a lot in non-windy area. So with all that said, I still actually keep the Zip 303S wheels available for um, as my backup wheels for uh, my bikes that are SRAM XDR drivetrain bikes. Okay, so before I talk about my uh, new wheels that I put on my Pinarello Prince, so let's talk about just basic physics real quick. I'm not gonna sit here and pretend like I'm some kind of a aerodynamics engineer, computation fluid design person or like scientist. I'm not that. I'm just a regular normal dude. But basic physics dictate this. This is a relatively a flat surface area. So when you have a wind hitting it from the side, it's just basic physics. There's a surface, there's a force coming this way, that's gonna get knocked around. That's pretty easy for anybody to understand. So what the wheel companies do is they put in research and development money into making the wheels aero whilst maintaining some kind of a crosswind protection. So some of the things that you have seen would be like the wavy wheels, like the Zip, uh, what are they, 858 or some, some uh, odd things. And then Princeton Carbon Works, they also do the, uh, the wavy rim profile. You've also seen a bunch of dimple design like what they do as in golf balls. Uh, those are the Zip wheels, Firecrest or whatever. So all those things developed to aid with the crosswind protection. Now, whether that's true, whether that's just a marketing thing to uh, sucker us consumers into buying those expensive wheels, I don't know. I have not had the pleasure of riding the Princeton Carbons or the Zip, the Wavy, the whole whale fin design, whatever the hell that they use. So with all that said, I've actually gone with the wheel set that are deeper in profile, that um, the height of the rims would be taller for my Pinarello prints, which contradicts the whole basic physics that I just talked about where the taller profile would, have, would be more susceptible to crosswind. But I don't know why, I can't explain it to you, but the wheels perform better. All right, so let's talk about the whole aero thing. So. Um, Ultimately, my decision to go with this particular wheel set came from extremely great experience that I had and I still have from my Hunt 4454 aerodynamicist wheel that I have on my Orbea Orca. So I've gone with the 50 mil in the front, the 65 mil in the rear, so they are staggered configuration. They are actually non-aerodynamicist labeled by Hunt, which would be their air, uh, specifically engineered for aero gains. So this wheel set actually does not carry that um, brand, uh, does not carry that moniker, but you know, 50 mil, 65 mil, they are definitely aero. With the uh, spokes, I actually went with the steel spokes and the uh, hubs use the regular steel bearings, not uh, ceramic bearings. The rims are 27 mil wide and they combined weight comes to about 1,530 grams. So immediately, 
the crosswind protection is so much better with this new wheel set compared to the Zip 303S, which was the whole reason why I made this change. And then differences are almost immediate in terms of characteristics. And even the, the wheel set alone also changes the like overall characteristics of the bike, the way it handles, the way it rides. So previously with my Pinarello Prince um, equipped with the Zip 303S, great, again, very well, roll very well rolling and all that. But I almost felt the bike uh, was a little bit wild in terms of its characteristics. But once you put the 5065 on here, then the bike now feels more, um, I, the, the word I want to use is more grounded. And I don't mean as in it's like a stuck and not moving. Grounded as in it feels more solid and it feels just more grounded. And I believe that also has a lot to do with the fact that the front end is solid and not susceptible to, you know, inkling of a wind coming from the sides. And then with this wheel set being aero, and if you've ridden aero wheels before, you would know what I'm talking about. There is this whooshing sound that every aero wheel set makes when you are just rolling, right? Just the wheels make this whooshing sound and you almost feel like, you, you, you almost feel like as if you're really cutting through the air with your bike and it's a pretty satisfying. So when you're in that zone, you totally feel that you're just motoring and you definitely do feel and experience that there's a little bit of a free speed that you are actually getting from the wheel set alone. Now with that said, I also want to uh, make it clear, just by having aero wheel set doesn't mean that you just automatically go fast. So I think from my personal opinion from last several years of uh, using you know, different aero wheel sets. You gain aero wheel sets, the benefit from the aero wheel sets come right at about when you are at or above right about 15 mile per an hour average speed. So anything below that, I don't think you're really getting any sort of an aero advantage, but once you get past 15 mile per an hour or so average speed, then that's where the whole aero thing kicks in and you could totally see that you're putting less watts down to go the same speed or you're putting down the same watts down and you are just going that much faster. All right, so inevitably with this be with the wheel set being aero, not light and uh, shallow depth, the question would be, hey, so how do they perform when you are climbing? So here's uh, how I would put it. If I have a segment that's about five miles of constant climb, let's say at about gradient of about 6% average from beginning till the end, I think I'm only about slower by about 10 seconds. So in overall scheme of things as an enthusiast and hobby rider level, that is really not a whole heck of a lot of a loss on a five mile constant climb. Now, if you're obviously a pro tour rider and you're you know fighting for seconds, that comes into play. But at you know my level, I'm gonna make up the 10 seconds either on the descent or on flat section on a group ride. So it's really not that big of a deal. However, I do want to also say this. So while I'm not really noticing the wheel sets are slower on climb by that much, I do notice that um, if things get super punchy all of a sudden, let's say you're going 6%, 6%, 6%, and all of a sudden you are hitting a 13%, then that pickup right as the gradient gets violent it doesn't the bike doesn't go as smoothly as you are trying to pick up speed also on a similar note let's say you are on a sprint situation because you're in a competition type of a situation and the finish is a mountaintop finish and you need to sprint on uphill the immediate pickup, the, the initial pickup to sprint, that out of saddle effort to just propel to uh, beat the guy next to you, that's not as fast on a 
shallow box rim. So that's, uh, you know, the two type of situations where uh, this particular wheel set wouldn't give me benefit. Again, however, on the descent, on the flat, I'll be able to smoke the other guy on the shallower uh, depth rims. So again, you're giving some, but then you're taking some there but i did want to mention uh, how the wheels perform on climb situation in terms of overall let's say i am doing a 40 mile flat course flat route with the wheel set i'm about two minutes faster with the 5065 wheel set compared to something about at about 45 mil and you know that's pretty substantial right now i don't give too much credence to the numbers only because the variables are not the same when i have these different uh, rides but you know i'm just looking at my ride ride records and i could see i'm about two minutes faster per 40 miles uh with the same route just on a different day therefore different wind condition my body condition may be different but about two minutes of savings on 40 mile it should be about average for me all right so in conclusion here's the thing every cycling youtuber right now has videos on the hypers icans uh, the elite drive wheels, so all these uh, budget-friendly value Chinese wheels and Listen, I'm not turning my nose up on them. I haven't had a chance to ride any of those wheels So I can't say positive or negative things about those wheels, but here's what I will tell you the 5065 came in below thousand dollar mark matter of fact below nine hundred dollar mark and they are fully backed and also, there are Pro Tour wheels. I believe uh, AG2R, the BMC bikes, those are equipped with the Hunt wheels. So, uh, you know, they're pro uh, proven, tour proven, and their customer service is absolutely exceptional. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Hunt, although by all the number of comments that I've received from people saying, hey, after watching your uh, videos about order my set of hunt wheels or the dms that i'm getting hey i'm putting in my order for hunt wheels which model do you recommend all these different things i mean i've got dozens and dozens and dozens of those messages and comments with that maybe hunt should sponsor future episodes but i'm just saying so um i'm just gonna say with the great value despite you know one can argue that these may not be the best wheel set ever right however to me when you look at the performance per dollar proposition bang for your buck i mean this is going to be super hard to beat the 5065 was uh, below 900 dollars. my 4454 was i believe right around thousand dollar mark maybe eleven hundred dollar so with the gain that you have from the uh, aero engineering and how solidly the wheels are built you know they they punch really well above their price tags so when you look at these value chinese wheels you know, hypers are what fourteen hundred dollars right now um and there may be better wheels than these. I don't know. I haven't written those before. Um, if you have a set you want to send me, then I'll be more than happy to write them. But um, when you look at those things and you look at something like the Hunt wheels, it's just, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I've had such great experience. I would not hesitate even for a second to recommend you to uh, look at Hunt wheels. And uh, those are now going to, the 5065 uh, will, will now live on my Pinarello Prince permanently. All right, so uh, enough of my rambling. I hope this episode was beneficial to you. Um, if you have any questions about the wheel sets or whatever, I can, you know, for things that I can answer per my experience, please feel free to ask me any questions via my email or the comments down below. That would be awesome. Again, don't forget to hit the like button if you enjoyed my episode so that I can come see you more often whenever I put out one of these videos out. And uh, that's about it for this episode. So you guys, thanks for sticking around. I've been Diabetic Cycling. You've been awesome. Until next time, be safe out there. Keep the rubber side down and safe riding. I'm out. Take care.